So uh, for anyone who's on the call that doesn't already know me, I'm Swim Swinford. I'm a board member for the Upper Captiva Civic Association. And um, this will be our second town hall um, to discuss the proposed uh, rezoning of 4400 Point House Trail um, that Safe Harbor Marinas uh, would like to turn into uh, 10 hotel rooms, basically. Um, and so you know, basically the, the first of it, if, if you're on the first town hall a few weeks ago, um, this may sound redundant. I'm gonna go through the same process in the beginning, just so anyone who wasn't on the call um, understands what it is and what, what the process is. Um, so, uh, with no further ado, I'll dive in. So uh, 4400 Point House Trail is a parcel uh, over kind of near uh, Mainstay. It's a couple of parcels over from Mainstay and Davenport's uh, area. And Safe Harbor Marinas uh, acquired that land uh, a couple of years ago. And now they intend well, they would like to build a 10 unit uh, hotel on it that would be developed as uh, 10 separate bungalows that are elevated off the ground. Um, is there anyone that's on the call who has not seen the video concept of the development or that no, doesn't know anything about the development? Anyone want to? Raise your hand. You can raise your hand if you're on the phone by hitting star nine. What's that? Nope. Nope. I, we'll continue. I, I, if anyone wants at some point, I, I could play the concept video for you so you can see what they're proposing. But 10 individual bungalow type units with a uh, elevated pool bar with limited food and, and beverage is, is what they're looking to do on that property. That property is right at an acre, it's 0.96 acre, and is currently zoned a C1, and they are looking to get it rezoned as a commercial plan development. The reason they are wanting to do that is under a C1 designation, you can only do three hotel rooms per acre. And so they're one acre. Right now, they could do three hotel rooms on that. They could just go do that. They wouldn't need to get a variance request or anything. They just do it. But they obviously want more than that. So they are uh, proposing to move it zoning-wise to commercial plan development. What that means is uh, they can do more hotel units. And actually, for a CPD, the minimum number of hotel rooms you can do under CPD is 10. So if they get that CPD, uh, hopefully they are only going to do 10 because a CPD could do more than 10 units. Um, so with that brings a, a lot for us to think about as an island. Um, and the goal of these town halls is to educate everyone on what it is, what they're looking to do, and the process that is currently taking place and that will take place through the county. Um, that way, whether you're against it or for it, whatever, as an individual or groups of people, you know the path forward of what's going to happen and, and at what points as a community we can get involved. Um, so I'll kind of, I'm going to share a document with you real quick. Let's do this. Let's see, David, where to do that in there. So share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see this document. David, can you see it? Yep. Okay. So the, these are sort of important dates uh, regarding the, the development and, and where it is. So on December 15th of 2020, they had Safe Harbor 
uh, at an on-island informal meeting with the community. They came out to the land parcel, they put up tables and, and a tent and, and um, whiteboards showing their concept. And the CEO of the development was there along with some other Safe Harbor Marinas people, uh, as was their construction company and their engineer. And there were probably about 50 people at that meeting. I was there. Um, several other communities members were there. And they got a, they got a pretty good earful that day um, on, on that. We'll get into that a little bit later as we start sort of talking through this stuff. Uh, after that informal meeting, they went ahead and on February 2nd, they filed their application and paid their application fee to the county. That started the process of the application. This application is, is not a simple process. It's, it's quite expansive and the county requires a lot of information. So it's, this wasn't something that someone could, you know, spend three hours on and, and submit that application. Anyway, so they filed their application on February 19th. Uh, the county, on their behalf, sent letters to the adjacent property owners um, to their parcel and just notifying them of the proposed rezoning application. On March 3rd, the county sent their first in insufficiency notice to Safe Harbor. And all that means is the county went through their original application and they have more questions. They're, they're just answers uh, that Safe Harbor either failed to give them or were vague. And so they, they noted on that insufficiency letter questions that the county had and, and things that they had to um, follow up on. On May 5th, Safe Harbor responded to the first insufficiency notice with answers. Then on June 2nd, the county sent a second insufficiency notice uh, on their application asking for more questions and, and more background on different things. All of these uh, items from the application to the insufficiency notices to their response are on the UCCA website under an initiative called Safe Harbor Marinas. Uh, so you can go there. I'm not going to pull up the application and read through it with everyone. It's, it's uh, just the first applications, 81 pages, each uh, insufficiency notice and response or a dozen or more pages as well. So if you wanna dive into the minutia of it all, I, I invite you to go pull up the application, pull up those letters and read through. It'll go through a lot of detailed information. So at this point, their application is still considered insufficient with the county. I just checked the county portal this morning. There's no new paperwork. So they have not yet responded to the county on this uh, new insufficiency notice. And so the county's at this point just waiting on that. Anytime they send in information to the county, the county has 30 days to respond. They have to respond within 30 days. So where do we go from here? Uh, at some point, we have to assume that their application is going to become sufficient. The day that their, the county views their application as sufficient, as I said just a minute ago, the county has 30 days to review that application and respond to it. And the department that will be reviewing it is zoning. Now, there are a lot of other departments that will interact with zoning from uh, environmental to uh, municipal waste, all these. And some of them touch our island and some don't, right? We don't have municipal waste. So the municipal waste department would basically just say, hey, we're not involved. Um, so anyway, the zoning department will have 30 days to review and respond to the application. Once the zoning department responds to the application, they will have a recommendation either for or against the zoning, um, the rezoning. At that point, the zoning department hands it off to a county hearing examiner who is independent of 
all other county departments. That hearing examiner, once they uh, receive that package from zoning, is not allowed to reach out to the zoning department, talk to any personnel, ask any other questions. So they will, the hearing examiner will set a hearing date for at least 60 days in the future. And over that 60 days, the hearing examiner will review the application. They'll review all the information submitted by zoning and their recommendation. And that hearing examiner will go review uh, land use laws, property rights laws, and the county's uh, land development code and future use of, of land. Um, then once the hearing examiner's done that, they will have the hearing. At that hearing, the applicant, which will be Safe Harbor Marinas, will show up and they will present what they wanna do and why they wanna do it. Zoning department will present their findings on it and their recommendation. And then at that point, the community <clears throat> individuals can go and speak in front of the hearing examiner. There are two ways to get your voice heard by the hearing examiner. One is you can write letters in advance um, to have put on the record and they'll be read into the record um, at that hearing or you can show up in person. When you show up in person, you'll show up early, you'll get your name on the list and you can speak for, against, or just rant about um, the project, the island, whatever you want, and there's no time limit. If you want to speak for four hours, they will let you speak for four hours and they'll continue that hearing over the course of days if it, if it takes that. Um, and this is a very important part. If you do not speak at that hearing, you may not speak later in front of the county commissioners. So if you want to have a voice, you have to show up and speak. So after the public has their input at that hearing, the hearing examiner will take all that information in. I'm not sure at this point if that's days or weeks. And the hearing examiner will come up with their recommendation for or against the rezoning. At that point, the hearing examiner hands it off to the county commissioners, who will also uh, schedule a the on their docket 60 days in the future. And then uh, at that point, it'll go up in front of the county commissioners. They'll review everything. If you spoke at the hearing with the hearing examiner, you may speak in front of the county commissioners. You'll have three minutes max in front of the county commissioners. And then at the end of that county commissioner's meeting, they will have a vote and it's going to be A or an A between five county commissioners and whatever they vote is what it will be. Um, and at that point, there's no turning back. So that's sort of the process uh, moving forward. Does anyone have questions on that? I'm going to stop sharing that document. So, and this is Mike Phillips. I think maybe you ought to just mention that there is precedent for this kind of development on the island with Brian Brillhart's planned development there at the corner of Rum Road. And maybe you have that scheduled for later on. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, well, let's talk about that real quick. So there, there's actually, um, we'll call it one and a half. Uh, precedents for it. So before this development, and even before Brian's there, there was um, the Kinsey Inn was trying to go in uh, on a parcel near this one. It uh, it actually never got a determination because they they pulled the the zoning request before it got anywhere. So uh, and anyone on the call that has the the dates on this right because I wasn't around when this happened, but but year, years ago. Uh, Brian was trying to build a boat barn, uh, from what I understand, over where he's got the marina. Actually, Tom might be able to, to speak to this some. Um, actually, Tom, do you want to unmute yourself? It's, uh, it's star six to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, so maybe, go. Can you hear me? I am. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I was a part of that. It, it's a long. It is a long process, uh, and I, in, in our case, I, I, that we went through with with Brian, I, and uh, we were approved by uh, the hearing examiner, and got got approvals all along. And then we, when we finally got to the uh, the uh, the commissioners, they they went thumbs down on it. So you never quite know how far you're going to get on this thing, uh, or how far they might get. But uh, it it was it was it's quite a it's quite an ex I'm sure they got money to back them up, so they'll be able to keep on going as long as they want to keep on going on it. Uh, and, and you're right. And you're right to to give everyone sort of the scope of who Safe Harbor Marinas is. They. Uh, they were actually uh, purchased last year by I think it's a, it's a REIT called Sun Communities, and they own you know sort of a mobile home and RV parts, and they have plans for for sort of modern mobile homes in like marine environments and stuff, and and so that that we you know bought safe harbor marinas and safe harbor Mar marinas just in terms of their marina portfolio their marina portfolio is valued at a billion dollars in assets so this this is a very very large uh company that, that we're dealing with so i don't i don't think that we're dealing with someone who is gonna shrug off spending money to get what they want and everything when Yes. Um, this is Aunt Caroline. This is a dumb question, but are any of the safe harbor people on this call, or is this just Islanders? I know. To, 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 to my not, to my knowledge, they they are not. Um, you know, as for anyone that wasn't on the last call, they uh, they sort of crashed our Zoom last time. I noticed uh, the engineer on the call. Um, from the offset, I let them stay on for a few minutes and, and I called them out before we really started discussing and, and everything, but that was a pretty hot topic that they just showed up. So they, uh, I think they kind of learned their lesson last time. Um, I don't see anyone on here that I don't recognize from something. So- Do we know um, who invited them last time? I, I'm i just curious. No, if, if we, we, we don't, but- them. Say that again. I'm just curious to know who invited them and why. Um, but I mean, I guess that's a discussion for for another time. But you know, I think that these meetings, town halls that you're holding, are really private discussions for the island. And if mm -hmm. anyone is on here and invited them or shared the Zoom information with them, that was very inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know that any of them are members of UCCA, but, you know, obviously UCCA sends out an email about it to their members. They could find out that way if they, hey, if they knew a homeowner on the homeowners group that, that so, maybe. So, hey, Swin. Yes. So this is David. So th since this is a matter of islands, like you know, on the island manner, we did not mm -hmm. limit the distribution of the email notice to just members of UCTA. Gotcha. And so we sent that out to the entire, you know, list, yeah. subscriber list of UCCA, which is 475 people, which some oh, are historic right. members and others. So I'm certain there's many ways this could have gotten out. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it, it, it would be um, logical that someone from Island Girl uh, or Pineland would be on that distribution list, and they're they're owned by Safe Harbor Marinas. So, gotcha. yeah, um, okay, very that, very, that makes, very possible. That solves that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You bet. So, um, so I guess you know, sort of next thing it, again. Does anyone have any questions about the process forward and how it's going to work with the county from zoning to hearing examiner to county commissioners? Nope. Cool. I, so, I think, uh, uh, go ahead. This is Tom Jenkins again. I think uh, they do have a considerable amount of money behind them. It's not to say 
that uh, I love our county commissioners, but uh, they can be swayed with with money, yep. as a lot of people can. So uh, I don't want to say we're we're fighting an uphill battle for those that don't don't wish it, but it's going to be it will be an interesting one, and it'll it might prove to be an expensive one from right. from our part also. Yeah. Uh, so just just want to throw that in there real quick, okay? Yeah, and, and, and that's have, part of I, that. Go ahead. I have a question, and just to piggyback on what Ann Carolyn was saying, and then David clarified that the email was disseminated to every member of the UCCA, correct? For no. the previous meeting. Was this no. meeting also sent out and published on the UCCA what, what, website? It this this is this distribution list that went out to both times has been the full UCCA subscriber email subscriber list, which is not membership. It's anyone who is interested in UCCA matters. Okay, so back to again, I guess, Ann Carolyn. Then I guess we could assume that someone is on this call from Safe Harbor or Island Girl or Pine Island Marina or Sun Communities, what, whichever organization could be on this phone call. I think that's a safe assumption. That's what it, I it, wanted it, to do. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's absolutely possible. Um, but I can tell you, let, let's just ask this, who, who has the phone number 727-515? Nine five three five. Can that person let us know who you are? They might not know how to unmute. Star six to unmute. Yeah. There, there, there. Are maybe three phone numbers on here that I don't recognize. Um, everyone else names and stuff I recognize. I mean, look to, to a certain degree. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how on this island and how. Uh, stakeholders are distributed a, across everything, how we're going to have secret meetings. You know, if, someone, if someone gets the info and wants in, you know, Swin. they want it. Swin. Yes. This is Laura. Hey, Laura. You said it's a 717 number? No, no, 727. Okay, because the 717 is me. Yeah, yeah, no, I knew that. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, getting back to I don't know how we're gonna have a you know fully secret meeting when we're trying to also spread the word and get, you know, frankly, as many people who are stakeholders on the island who a lot of us don't know in here to to discuss all this. Um so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward a, a little bit. So you know, what I'd like to do now is is sort of like, you know, as as a group discuss the pros and cons of it, right? And, and I know full well the cons are, are gonna line up hugely um, where the pros, even I personally, I have a hard time seeing what the pro is of this development and everything. Does anyone want to sort of speak to a pro or a con against it uh, or for it? Uh, I mean, just just for a minute, uh, are they offering anything to for the to the island? Uh, in other words, we we talked about from the roads to maybe building up a berm to stop the flooding. Uh, are they going to do anything? And my other concern is, let's say they did build this nice thing. Let's say three years from now it didn't pan out. So what becomes of all these buildings now that only their club members could uh, could go to? So I, 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 I guess I have concerns, but I would also like to know what they're gonna do to help us. Uh, and you know, our, our roads could use it and, uh, and anything to stop the flooding uh, yeah. would be helpful, so. Yeah, so, so, uh... I'll, I'll answer that um, 
for you. So I've, I've had a couple of calls. Um, the last one was in, in February or March with the CEO of, of Safe Harbor. From their perspective, they are waiting to hear from the community what we want, right? But that's very hard for a community that doesn't, that isn't a municipality and doesn't have any sort of centralized system or governance to come up with, right? Right. The, even right. The, the 32 people on this call will come up with a dozen different things individually that we all think would be great for the island or that we want, right? From, from roads to land conservation to protecting Safety Harbor. Um, you know, I don't think any of us uh, want to see 20 or 30 more golf carts in usage by, you know, that dense of a, you know, development. Uh, we already have an island wide trash problem. You know, that's just inviting more trash. Uh, these are going to be, from what I understand, one and two night stay kind of things. And they've got the dockage over there with, you know, five to six slips. So you got to think that their community are boaters. So those are boaters that are going to come in for a day or two and be in and out several times a day going around boating and enjoying themselves. That's a lot of extra traffic into our harbor and everything. And, and yeah. it, it, it's crowded as it is. So, so part of the next step here, my, my goal, and, and some of this I'm having to sort of pivot as we go, um, how these town halls go and everything. But the next step is to hopefully have a town hall with Safety Harbor on it to answer a lot of these questions, right? So the goal would be from, from these couple of town halls for us to come um, up with a document, maybe it's two pages, pages, maybe it's 10 of questions for them. So they can be prepared, right? So every answer isn't having to be thought of on the spot, but have them come in, answer the core community questions, and then be up on the hot seat, just like this. Let's be able to ask them questions, the hard questions. You know, uh, I was talking to someone earlier today, you know, has there been an impact study done on this? Is it just like the county's just gonna like, hey, you know, zoning requests or not, but what is the true impact? We, I mean, we know from, you know, property owner and resident standpoint, what we think the impacts are. They're, they're what we see every day and everything, but there are bigger impacts that we don't see, right? The environmental impacts, the impacts on seagrass, the impacts on the manatees that, it, you know, so, you know, Where's that study come from? Is the county going to do that in zoning before they come up with their recommendation? I don't see I don't see them getting that done in thirty days. So also, go ahead. Sorry. Is San Carolina again? They're planning on requesting a major variance that allows them to go way past what the traditional setbacks are, and I think they're trying to claim that because they're raised above the ground that they can kind of ignore what the zoning requirements are for example you know you have to be six or eight feet from the water line and the mangroves have to be taken into consideration and all that from what i understand and i think you can speak a lot more to this and correct me and forgive me if i'm wrong they are expecting to have a footprint on that lot that is basically the entire footprint of the lot and, and yeah and that's a big deal mm -hmm. so you get yeah, there's yeah, a hand yeah. up there's a hand up swim oh oh is that, okay yeah, hold on one second uh can you unmute them david yes i can only, I can only ask to unmute um star oh, six i think that's i think that's laura yes Hi, yes, it is me. Um, did we ever find out what kind of notice or discussion they've had with Salty Approach? Y yes, so uh, from what I understand, and um, Brian, to call you out, if I don't, I, do you want to speak to yeah. it? Sure. Yeah. So the only notice that we got, and this is Brian Thomas, I'm one of the managers of the Salty Approach, one of five managers. Uh, the only approach that we've had is a letter requesting that we 
send a letter of approval for their uh, request to exceed the normal height standard for their buildings and go to 35 feet. We discussed this at great length and we decided that we would, uh, we would not object to the building being 35 feet high, but we would not um, as a group or as, as the managers um, approve the project in any way. And I've okay. put out feelers to the, to the other managers recently and I haven't gotten a response. My take on this, and, and, and I talked with Swin about this, I'm concerned about the flooding uh, that could be caused by this project. And I have absolutely no indication from the, the, the developers as to any impact studies uh, about drainage. So as, as a group, uh, you know, the managers are uh, tasked with, with ensuring the, the viability of the runway, and we're concerned about that. So until we get some kind of an impact statement from either the county or the developers indicating that, you know, they've made a study and, and approved and said it won't impact it, and we agree with it, we're not going to, we're not going to, uh, you know, approve the, the construction. We're not going to, you know, that's, that's, that's where we stand right now. Right. You're not going to back it. Um, we're not going to back it. Support. We're also concerned too that as, as I was telling Swin earlier, if you add 12 units there, you could possibly add 24 golf carts. And the first place they're going to go is the nearest beach, which is the end of our runway. We currently right. have a outside anyway. of yeah, yeah outside of the height of visibility. Back. Right. I yeah, was look. thinking outside of the height visibility, the potential to increase flooding to that area and and also the complete blockage of the landing strip on that side on the beach. Um, right. those were all pretty major. Yeah, we currently if, well, we have always had, had a problem with people ignoring the signs and and parking golf carts in the middle and putting up their umbrellas and stuff. And, you know, the, the fact that you can land an airplane on that and not have a problem, it's, it's not the, the normal landings or the normal takeoffs that are a problem. It's when the airplane is, is in an emergency situation or has a problem on takeoff or landing, then it becomes, you know, a, a threat. Right. Yeah, in, in particular, that development makes the density of that area by the airstrip and, and over there by Point House Trail and everything just massively dense to compared to anything else on the island. And, and yeah. as Ryan said, I mean, al al already, I, I think we, we know that it's problematic with people at the end of the airstrip, parking carts, standing there, everything, so. Well, and, and if that, if they don't, if they don't have some kind of engineering thing in place, will help with drainage, et cetera, it's also going to increase the floodplain for the homes on the opposite side of the airstrip. So, I mean, right, exactly. that's a lot of work for them. I know they've got the money, but. Yeah, so they let's, really let's, weren't willing to, to look outside of their own little area based on what they said on the last call, that they were concerned with where the townhomes were going and not the island impact. So, And the, and the, the airstrip has been working for the past over a year now with, the, with, the, uh, with uh, A.J. Laval and the, and the fire department to try to increase the drainage and improve the roads and we've, we've been very successful at it. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, there's oh, yeah. a lot less problem. And, and like I said, we're working with, with both the, the air, well, with the fire department to try to impact both the airstrip and the roads without um, 
causing you know costing a great deal of money. Yeah. Is Swan is yeah. this development part of the coastal flood zone or whatever it is that requires all the, uh, the, the coastal uh, construction line? Yeah. Yes. Are they in the velocity zone? That's what you're asking. And yes. Exactly. Well, I can I, I can help with that. So I, I can help answer that question. Um they're be they're in front of the 1991 coastal construction control line. And I believe because they are on the bay side, not the gulf side, that they're gonna be able to build and not have any issues. DEP will not allow you to build in front of the 78, which is um, the homes along the side of the Gulf. Um, I don't even, I can't remember the name of the road. A lot of those homes are in front of the 78 line against the beach. So um, DEP won't allow that, but they will allow um, in front of the 91. They're probably gonna have to do a couple things, but. I don't think it'll be a major issue because they're on the base side and not the golf side is what I've, I'm reading. So, and someone else mentioned about the impacts um, because they are basically building to the lot lines or their, that's their proposal. Um, with the county, they're just trying to get rezoning. So county's not gonna really say, hey, we don't like your picture. We don't like your design. They're gonna have to go through the DEP to get a DEP permit. And that's when they're gonna have to go through and say, okay, well, I don't, instead of having a five foot setback, I only want a two foot setback from the mangroves or from the water. Or I think even what some of their stuff is in the water line or something right along the water that uh, county called out. So they're gonna have to get variances and request to be in those setbacks or, um, or the DEP will actually say, hey, we don't like this design, we don't like it. We want this five foot setback, you have to redesign. So even though this is their proposed drawing right now, they have to go through DEP permitting, which could take, and they're set up the same time frame. They submit, DEP has 30 days to review and respond. Applicant has 90 days to review and respond. So, I mean, application process can go on for another year, going back and forth like cat and mouse, if they get the rezoning to see what DEP hey, will allow. Hey, Erica, let's, let, yeah. let's take a quick step back and, and would you um, go ahead and let everyone know sort of your background and everything? Yeah, um, I've actually been, we just purchased out there in November, um, but I've been coming out to the island since about 2008. I used to work for Hans Wilson and Associates, probably a bunch of you know who he is. Um, I was his biologist and project manager um, Hans is a coastal engineer, and so we did a lot of docks permitting, a lot of the homes that are out there, a lot of the pools that are out there, I did the coastal construction control line permitting for. So I was always out there once a month doing the reports, um, the environmental stuff, anything the DEP needed. Um, so that's, I have background, I used to do permitting, so mainly concentrating with DEP, so. But yeah, that's that's why Eric knows deal. so much about this. By the way, so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's me too, and great to have someone on the island with your background and your skills and resources. So a huge welcome to you. Oh, thank yeah, you. So so I'll, I'll call out real quick that that Erica actually uh, dug up a couple of new documents that um, you can find on the UCCA website under the Safe Harbor Initiative. Um, that, that really speak to the submerged land lease and, and the dockage. Um, and, and there are some issues there. Erica, do you want to speak to that stuff? Sure. Um, probably most of you guys don't know that the state of Florida owns the bottom land. So if someone builds a dock, they have to, the state owns from the mean high water line out. And so if you build a dock or marina, in most cases, you need to get a submerged land lease. And that's with the DEP. You design your dock, you get so much square footage, depending on all kinds of fun stuff with the DEP, like how big your shoreline is or what your zoning is. And then you pay an annual fee based on how big your dock is. 
So for years, I think I looked it up, I think in 05 is when the aerial shows there was an L dock at this lot. And in 2018, it changed into a six slip dock. Um, I'm looking, so I, I contacted DEP, I was able to get this, um, the submerged land lease and I'm looking at the drawings. Their current dock does not match the current picture for their submerged land lease. They actually have extra footage, extra dockage. So more than likely they will have to remove the extra dock because they're shading the bottom land and they're not paying for that dockage that's sitting there. Um, also Safety Harbor and Pine Island Sound are aquatic preserves. And so DEP gets very nervous when you start building anything in there, especially with all the manatees and the, um, you know, the seagrasses and stuff like that out there. So more than likely they're gonna have to make sure that their docks match the picture. Um, obviously the new owner did not have anything to do with the six slip dock. That was the old one. And it's possible when they rebuilt when they changed it from an L dock to a six slip dock, whoever constructed it didn't read the plans correctly and just left the two walkways. I mean, who knows how it happened? Um, nobody checked on it. Nobody tore it down. So, um, or the old down. Yeah, they just they just left it. So, um, but yeah, so they'll have to do that. Also, the in their submerged land lease, when you read it, I think it's on the first page. It says usage. The usage of the docks has to match the usage of the uplands. So if you look at the submerged land lease, there is an actual DEP permit that the previous owners went through for a tiny marina, like a pavilion that was supposed to be constructed on this lot that went with the six slips. The pavilion was never built. Nobody has ever really used the six slips and now we have a new owner. So if the zoning does go through, and he wants to build these tree houses, he also has to go through and match the usage of the submerged land lease with the upland use of a hotel. And I don't know how DEP is going to deal with that modification, if they'll really like that, considering that we're in an aquatic preserve and um, you know the previous six slips were supposed to be for some tiny little marina pavilion. So it, it all comes down to what DEP submerged land lease folks are gonna agree with. But like you said, these folks have a lot of money, so. Um, we've always said anything's possible with time and money and it's yeah. true. So, um, not to discourage anyone, but, you know, but these are a couple of things they're going to have to go through and, and, um, tackle. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have time. It's not like these things are going to be built in six months. You're probably looking two years if we can, if, if we don't fight the zoning and if we don't, you know, squash the project with the zoning. So uh, real quick, Linda Hanson's had her yeah. hand up for a while. Linda, you want to unmute star, star six to unmute? Or I don't know if you're on the phone. No. David, can okay. you? Okay, I think, there I think I'm unmuted. Yeah, um, we can hear you. Okay, I own a home on Schooner Drive, Happy Hours, and I bought it about six years ago. And when I first came to the island, the thing that I really fell in love with was the fact that it was quiet and peaceful. I didn't have to worry about traffic. I didn't have to worry about crime. I didn't have to worry about crowds. I didn't have to worry about noise. And this, to me, really seems to threaten the character of the island. And other than arguing that this is an unconstitutional taking without compensation or something, um, is there a forum in which we can make that kind of an argument? Because it's not environmental, it's not safety, but this to me stands, it, it gives an opportunity to someone to change the character of North Captiva Island. And this company isn't some, isn't one that has lived on the island, isn't one that is part of the island and probably doesn't really care about the character of the island. So how do we go about fighting something like that? Uh, well, uh, to, to fight that, we're gonna have to go through the process. So that, that process you know, will be everything from uh, presently, you could send letters to the zoning 
department in the county, and, and I, I can share who to send those to, uh, stating what you don't like. But here, here's the tough part and, and where it gets super legal. We can't kill it by saying that we don't like it or we don't <laughs> want it. It, it. it has to come down to uh, violations, if you will, of the land development code and future use uh, within that code and, and things that don't match. And, and some of that is matching the, the character of the community versus what's coming. And so that, that is a valid um, concern. And then beyond you know, getting that information to zoning is then getting that information in front of that hearing examiner who's going to make a big decision. And so sort of following up on what Erica you know, was saying, the first piece of the puzzle for them is the zoning change, because if they can't get the zoning change, then their plans completely fall apart. If they get the zoning change, it doesn't guarantee that it would still happen. There are other things, other permits, the De Department of Environmental Protection, um, you know, the state with the, with the dockage and everything, other things that could torpedo them along the way because a state or you know, a state department is against it and it doesn't fit with what they require them to do. Um, but obviously if they get the zoning change, that's, that's a pretty big piece of the puzzle and, and they're gonna feel um, pretty good about their chances moving forward. So um, it, here's sort of what we're up against. We're, we're up against a company with money, uh, with an engineer and a construction company and attorneys that can help them. Uh, that's going up against a, a pretty fractured, disorganized community. And it, it, that's nothing on any of us personally. It is just the nature of where we are and what we are. So, you know, to come together and, and fight it, we're going to have to find some centralization to come together because if, if we may need an attorney, Right, it may need to be an attorney that gets involved to, to assist and everything, and that's going to take money. And are we, as a group, if if we're collectively against it, you know, how are we going to raise the money? And who's going to hire the attorney? And you know, who's that attorney going to be? And and you know, what's he or she going to go do to to fight to to try to kill it at the zoning level? If you kill it at the zoning level, it's done. They can't do it. Now, they could come in and do other things. They, they could come in and decide, well, we're going to build a restaurant or whatever. Um, so we, we can't keep people from using their property within the, the already planned zoning of, of that property, right? Unless they need some crazy variance that, that would be, you know, sort of detrimental to the island. So that's it. We've got it. We've got to come up with a, a voice. And I'll turn it. Kerry Williams, you want to jump in? Uh, yeah. Um, what I'm concerned about is this. If you go to their website and you take a look at these other facilities that they uh, allow their members to use, they are all first class and they have all the amenities. This thing will not. So if they are successful, it isn't going to take long until their members are crying out, look, we need more here. We need a bar. We need a restaurant. We need access to the southern end of the island. We need to get that pathway. We need to be able to run a, a, a tram down the pathway to the south end of the island so we can go to the beach. The other thing was, uh, if you remember in the last meeting, Jeff, I thought uh, he did some calculations, he, and I posted it here. He said that it will add 20,000 visitors to the island, you know, day trippers, which dwarfs the number of visitors that currently come to the island. And uh, at least with the renters that come here now, they're here for a week, and after a day and not knowing what they're doing, they figure it out. It's going to be a constant learning curve with goofballs coming over here, teenagers, college kids, and it's going to, it's going to really, as uh, some other people said, it's going to ruin the island. So we have to act in some way to stop this. Yeah. So, so let, let's speak to that just a, a second, as far as, you know, what we can tell from what they presented day of, 
and, and other feedback we've gotten. It, it does seem that their plan right now is to run this unmanaged or semi-managed, if you will. So in, in the current uh, rezoning request, they basically state they're gonna have the 10 units and they, they wanna be able to reserve one of them to be a caretaker uh, slash office unit that can be used by a manager during times that they might need that, but not full time. So, you know, the original presentation, they made it sound like this, which I'm pretty sure most of you will think is sounds ridiculous, that their guests are going to come in and they're going to require them to check in at Pineland Marina and that they don't anticipate that very many of their guests will come on boats that they will they will even drive and that they will check in and take Island Girl over be dropped on the island, island by island girl. They'll, they'll have a, they'll, they'll get their key over at Pineland. They'll get like a little map and then they'll walk themselves over to these bungalows, find theirs, check in and, and sort of be on their own on the island. I can tell you <laughs> that from the perspective of how I know homes have to be managed, it just sounds like a terrible idea. No one on site to answer questions, no one on site to assist. Like what if their key doesn't work? What do they do? Wait two hours for the next Island Girl ferry to go back over and get their key or whatever, you know, however they're gonna do it. Um, and, and so it just, is it logical? It, if I lived in Sarasota and I'm a safe Harbor member, I have dockage with them and I could use one of these bungalows, I'm probably coming in on my boat. And I'm probably going to want my boat there with me because I'm a boater, right? What am I going to want to do in my off time? Walk around the end of salty approach or be on my boat? Well, some, some may do salty approach, but I'm probably going to be off on my boat. So it, it just doesn't make any logical sense that they would have upwards of 30 or 40 people in 10 bungalows unmanaged on our island. It just sounds like a bad idea. I think Laura has her hand up. I, you pretty you pretty much said what I was going to say. These people are all people who have marina memberships. They love their boats. They love their boat life. They're not going to want to leave their boat behind. That's another issue. Yeah. Because I don't think that they're going to have enough dockage for their members if there's more than one family coming over or more than one member. They're going to look to Mainstay to rent slips, which is good for Mainstay. <laughs> right. So, so let's talk about economics. Um, so on the last uh, meeting, I, I had talked to the CEO uh, earlier this year. He did give me a, a, a round number at that time. And he's like, uh, if we move forward, it'll be a, probably a $5 million development. Uh, Robert Fowler, who's their construction company, who sort of crashed the last Zoom, told us on that one that it was around $6 million is, is what they view this development as. And so they're going to come build a $6 million development. And again, if you weren't on the first call, you may not have heard this, but the the goal here is they're they're not going to be renting these out like hotel rooms to their guests. Their their members have like a reward system or black card system. So they're going to be getting these experiences by cashing in rewards or incentive points, if you will. So you know, with that, it's like how <laughs> what caliber person are we going to get? That it's like, hey, it's just points. Do they care about it? You know, it's like. What value are these guests going to put on our island and everything? So let's see here. All right. Any more questions, I guess, in regards to like the economics of it? Oh, sorry. And Caroline, go right ahead. Hey, so. I just have two questions and they kind of dovetail with each other a little bit. Assuming their variance gets denied, what would they 
be allowed to do under the C1, just briefly. But secondly, let's say they get everything approved and they make an agreement with the community that we will do X, Y, and Z um, to help the island, et cetera, et cetera. And then in three or five years, they decide to sell the development to Leisure Suit Larry in Cape Coral who owns resorts or whatever. He is no longer bound by any commitment that these people have made to the island. And the usage of it would be whatever he wants to do, more or less, right? I, I think you're right. I think I think at that point, you know, it's at that point it's just 10 hotel rooms and you, you have an owner that doesn't care about, you know a membership and, and loyalty points and it could just be rented out as hotel rooms on a daily, you know, basis kind of thing. So I, I think you're right. And I think that that's a huge concern to look at is the potential future use for a future owner of the property after it um, changes hands. Georgia. Swin, because intent is non-binding. So it doesn't matter what the intentions of what value they would bring to the island. They are not bound to those intentions. I mean, it, it, it's they can say they're going to bring everybody a dozen roses and give us all free membership, but that doesn't mean that that's going to happen. And again, to piggyback, for lack of a better word, on what others are saying, is what if this goes bust for them? And then that becomes a fire hazard with vacant properties sure. sitting there. Um, and especially if there's electricity run through, we've got two fire board commissioners on here. I'm sure they could attest to that, but those are major concerns that I have. Yep. Yeah, they, they, yeah, there's no guarantee that if they came that they would su succeed and anything could happen. New, new owners or dilapidation, any of that can happen for sure. Okay, so uh, let's talk. Let's see here real quick. I guess, where do we go from here? So uh, I'm open to, to hearing suggestions, like how do we pull together as a community and invite this? What, 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 what do you guys think the way forward is? Um, I brought this up on, on the last call, right? And so look, I, we're doing this as part of UCCA. The goal here is, is to educate uh, as many people as we can on what the development is and what the process is. Uh, UCCA has not come into this with an agenda um, to solve the problem yet. It's really to educate everyone, get feedback and see where we are uh, as an island and, and how do we come together and go forward. So. Since we have no municipal system, right? We don't have a mayor. We don't have the city council. Uh, I don't know. I was actually talking to Brian about this earlier. I, we have a new county commissioner who, you know, I, I would hope is is island friendly. He used to be the mayor of Sanibel. He's pretty involved in conservation things with different groups, but. Pretty much the county commissioners have never paid attention to our little island because they care about voters and we're, I don't know, 106, 107 voters on the island, maybe a few more now. Um, so we're not really under their guides. When I reached out to Kevin Ruane, who is our county commissioner earlier this year, he basically referred me over to the county managers, right, in their purview, which all the county managers are going to do is, well, it's got to go through zoning and then it goes to hearing examiner, et cetera. So, um, you know, any ideas on pulling the community together moving forward? Well, this is Dan Carolyn. You know, there's $114,000 
at UCCA or something like that, is it possible that it could be considered to use part of that to pay for a lawyer to help defend the island or guide the island, how, whatever word you want to choose, to um, have a voice for us? Uh, and also, I, my I, question oh, uh, is, there's a, a new island beautification conservation organization that I've heard of that's coming. And is this appropriate for them? Could the money maybe be shifted over there so that it could be used to fight this if the UCCA doesn't want to or what? It's just an idea. And uh, if it's so, a terrible idea, I apologize. <laughs> so I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll take that in two, two different answers. So first with UCCA, I think anything's possible. I think that if that membership um, you know, came to the board and said, hey, you know, we really think this is a better use of these funds than island access. Um, you know, I, th I think the board would consider it. And, and I, th I think, you know, sort of without painting it into a corner last year, when that came up for a vote, it took a member vote to um, try to repurpose those funds. So I think it would have to go down the same path, there would have to be a membership vote um, to sort of, you know, repatriate those funds from the island access for, call it island defense uh, and everything. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that's a possibility. It's something that would just have to, you know, be discussed in UCCA board meetings and then with the community and everything. On the, um, on the Conservation Foundation, so with, with that, just for all transparency, uh, myself and Laura Hartle and Melissa Eberly are actually launching that foundation. So we're, we're a legal conservation foundation um, about to start the 5013C paperwork. We're probably too new and too young to, to tackle that because I think with, with this kind of project, um, we're going to have to have some sort of trust with the island and we haven't done anything yet. So, you know, I'd be happy to entertain it, but I don't know that we'd be the right organization yet. So, Does, when I have a question. Yes. For the group for consideration. So in, in the, the scheme of things that exist right now, there's a process they have to go through. We've already outlined that process. We have input to the zoning thing. Um, in whatever Erica mentioned, there were some questionable items later that will happen after that zoning that would have to like, get, jump their hoops through. At what point do we, do we need money right now? What does money do? Um, we can't take a bag of cash down to the commissioner's office and say, here, change this, right? So is it legal? What, what would a lawyer do if we had a lawyer in the, on the island that's an actual lawyer working pro bono that would say, like, we'll organize some papers? What would they do? There's nothing. I don't know what we can do legally so, or monetarily to do that. Yeah, so I, right I, I think from, from that perspective, and this, this is my opinion on it, you, you you would want to go get an attorney who specializes in property rights and land development code and everything. And, and that attorney would be looking at the same things that the hearing examiner is going to look at. And if there are things within that code that could prevent a zoning change, then you would just be pointing that stuff out. So there may not be anything there, but unless we had an expert looking at that stuff and i'm telling you i'm i'm not i can i can read documents with the best of them and and I, i've got a, a pretty good um legalese mind and all like that but at the end of the day i don't know state of florida property rights so, so there are lawyers like, like around an attorney would. so there are lawyers around the island that aren't those specialists but they would say okay so what's what kind of a, a, a amount of money would take to do an initial uh, funding of that kind of research. It doesn't seem like it'd be unlimited number. It wouldn't be six figures. It doesn't seem so we could, oh, yeah. we could no, identify, no, I mean, I think, if we could I think identify, if we could identify that amount expected, we could do a fundraiser island wide and just do it to start it. I mean, just to, that's a first step. And if there's something there, then kill it 
or totally not. agree. And, and and I think we showed it, you know, the, the island getting behind the tractor project recently. So look, let's just throw a number. Let's just say it's 10 grand. I, I think that we could go raise 10 grand as a, you know, initial defense fund, if you will, um, to work on this. But um, what's and everyone else? There's an easy there needs to be a spearhead on that. You know, I, I would certainly think we could bring that up to the UCCA board as two mm -hmm. members that would encourage that just to raise the funds, not not to, you know, even have to do more than that, just to coordinate it and raise the funds and then, you know, seek out a, an attorney to find out what we can find out for exploratory. If it's, if there is something there, then we can then take the next step. Yeah. So uh, a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, Jim McDonald, can we put a contingency in their change request with zoning so they cannot sell without including the conservation um, to North Captiva Island and include the agreements we agree upon? Therefore, whoever buys is buying with the understanding they're taking on that annual cost. So I think, Jim, are you still on? M might need more vocal clarification on that. So I think um, what Jim's getting at is if we got um, Safe Harbor to basically give us value, right? Let, let's just, let's just let's throw out a number. Just say that they figure out some way that they could raise or give the island $50,000 a year, right? Um, you know, if they ever left the island, trying to deed in that to that property that anyone that took it on would also have to continue that in, in terms of like conservation um, work and everything. I don't know. I've never negotiated a development like this. I'm not Swin? sure what's possible to put in there. Swin, it's Linda actually. Um, okay, we've, Linda. Hi. Um, we've actually owned an item, uh, a piece of property where we were the people that... <laughs> got screwed over with owning where we had to do something in the property. Like we were basically safety Harbor and we owned where we had to continue doing something for the people. And it. it was deeded in from like 1942. So it. it does happen where you can deed in something, whether it's electricity running through your property or you have to do certain things or, you know, water's running a certain way or, and if we work sure. in that we're doing, you know, what we've talked about in the past, whether they're building roads or, you know, collecting fees on the ferry or doing a sales tax or whatever it is that we agree to, you can put in a deed that says whoever owns this property shall maintain however they have to collecting a percentage of or collect a certain dollar amount per year that goes to island conservation. Right. You, you could do something like that. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that uh, in, in terms of where something like that would fit in here. So if, if we take that approach, then we're taking the approach of, well, if you're, if you're coming and you're going to do this, we want this, right? So there's, to me, there's sort of two paths forward. There, there's the path forward of um, collectively, the majority is against it, and there's a path to just go fight it and and try to kill the rezoning, or there's a path of negotiation where you're engaging with them, trying to gain value for the island. And then what is that value? How does that value get conveyed? Who's in charge of then managing that value and, and spending it on behalf of the island, right? And so the hard part for me there is I don't, I don't know that I've ever gone into a negotiation want, wanting to make sure something didn't happen and then pivoted it to getting everything I want. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe um Lin linda yeah oh that linda sorry okay no no oh yeah i'm sorry yeah there's which two. linda yeah linda hansen sorry sure this is linda hansen um my concern is that in order to negotiate something like that into an agreement we have to be in a position of power if we are clearly losing the zoning hearing and we say 
we're okay as long as they do this, they can simply say, no, we're not going to do that. Right. Um, I can tell you from experience, I live in a subdivision that was created with a buffer around it. Someone came in and bought the property across the street and said they wanted to put high end shopping there. Not enough people have opposed it. And now we're all living across the street from Target. And I've got nothing against Target. I shop there, but it's not what I wanted across the street. Sure. Um, so you really have to be in a position of strength to get that. We can't really rely on that as our go-to plan. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Um, other comments? Oh, I think I see someone else there. Yes, sir. Hey, Swen, this is Tim Powell. Um, I, I just want to point out that if you do start a negotiation, you, you've essentially given them a path to yes. So it, it's critical that no one either tell them anything that we want or accept anything from them, as long as I think the vast majority is trying to say no. Yeah, uh, agreed. And, and, um, just so everyone knows, there's a reason that I haven't engaged with them since February, right? So the, the, the core mission right now is to educate everyone on the island, get, get Islander feedback, and then, and then see where we go from here. Um, and and that's, that's part of the goal here. So again, out of this town hall and the last town hall, uh, we'll start fashioning uh, a list of questions, a list of concerns, all that kind of stuff. And then the goal will be probably, I'll say a month from now, uh, invite Safe Harbor to a town hall in which they'll answer those questions and more and everything and, and sort of you know hear from the community and then after that, we'll have had two town halls with the community, one with Safe Harbor, third with, a third with Safe Harbor. Then we do a survey, right? We need to survey the community and see where we are. Is this 75% against, 25%, you know, not necessarily for, but not against? Is it 51%, 49%? And then, you know, where do we take it at that point? Now, I can tell you, and, and hang in there one sec, Aunt Caroline. I, I can tell you just from what I know about the islands and, and sort of the makeup of all of us, it's going to fracture. There's no doubt it, it's going to fracture. No matter what groups get together and decide to be against, or maybe they're not completely against, there, there's going to be two, three, four, five, whatever different groups that go hey, the 12 of us, we're going, we're getting our own attorney, we're going to show up at the hearing, we're going to, you know, say this or that, and you have another group that says this, and it's just, uh, it's just a lot of different people with a, a lot of different mindsets, and um, look, I, I try to be as balanced as I can, but there, there are people on the island that don't like me, and that's fine, um, I have my opinions and, and the way that, that I, I work and, and everything, but, um, and I respect that They're, everyone's going to have their own sort of leader to a certain degree. Um, but I think it's in the best interest of us all, if we do have a, a majority consensus to try to come together as, as much as we can, um, with one big voice. So, and Caroline? And Caroline, you have your hand up. Do you want to say something? Star six. Hey there. Sorry about that. Uh, Swin, you're a huge asset to the island is your wife. And I don't think any, anybody would disagree with that. But um, so I have a question kind of going back to the origins of this whole thing. And again, correct me if I'm wrong and forgive me if, if I'm wrong. This whole thing got started when the sister of the CEO of Safe Harbor, she has vacationed on the island for many years with her family, loves the island because it is the way that it is. 
and she knew that there, this parcel was for sale and told her brother and he bought it and decided to, in essence do something that's likely going to take away what she loves so much about them. since then that company has been sold to a, com a company that sells uh, mo mobile homes and owns trailer parks and things like that is that correct so uh so the, the, the story about his sister and everything, that's definitely what he said the day of the initial presentation. I, I don't know if I buy that. I don't know that I buy that his sister vacationed on North Captiva and, and all like that. Maybe she vacationed in, in the area of Captiva and everything. Uh, I, I believe they, they acquired that parcel uh, basically through their acquisition of Pineland Marina. I think Pineland Marina actually acquired that parcel before them and that's that's where the whole ancient beach sign and future home of of um island girl and all of that came from they were working on that project prior to safe harbor being involved so um pardon my french i think some of some of that dialogue is kind of bullshit <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a fascinating, great sounding story that he found the island because his sister, did, but I don't believe it. Um, but you, uh, what was the last part? Oh, they, they did so, get acquired by Sun Communities, which is a large uh, real estate investment trust that owns everything from RV parks to mobile home parks to, if you go on their website, you see these crazy uh, modern mobile homes on on basically docking parcels in San Diego, right? So think of tiny homes. They look like m mobile homes, you know, with slips right next to them and everything. So, so, so since this guy told us that story about his sister, that company has been acquired by somebody else. And I assume that this gentleman is still bleeding the helm of, Safe Harbor Marinas, is that right? No. Nope. Say that With again. The, so this guy is still the CEO post acquisition, he right? He, he is. They, okay. they operate as a separate company under uh, Sun Communities. They're, they're not like merged and, and run together and everything. He's, he's still the CEO, yes. Okay. So there's no indication that Sun, as the new owner, might say, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, doubtful when you look at their website okay. and, and the things that they do. And, and so we have a, we actually have a, a, a property owner, a homeowner on the island who used to work with the CEO at uh, an investment firm. And one of their key things that that investment firm started doing was buying up mom and pop marinas to consolidate the industry and then she left that, but he obviously continued doing that. And, and probably that investment firm is what ended up popping into becoming what Safe Harbor is today. Okay. All right. That answers my question. Thank you. Yeah. Carrie. Um, there's no Safe Harbor people on today in this meeting, is there? Like there was not the last that, time. Not, not that we know of. We, we don't believe so. Okay, you, you've looked at all the names and the numbers. Uh, we, we've posted. looked at, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm pretty well, confident. I mean, my own advice to you is not to engage in any discussions with these people. Uh, the, the less they know about what you're going to do, the better off you'll be. And you can formulate a strategy without them being able to out strategize you once they know what your strategy is. So that's, uh, that's sort of my advice as a lawyer, uh, as a trial lawyer, is uh, I would not engage with these people. You're not gonna get anything out of them that could ever be enforceable anyway. So yeah. why waste your time and let them know what you're doing? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily disagree with that, Carrie. I don't, you know, it's, uh, the, the, I don't know that they can be trusted. <laughs> I mean, they're, 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 they're going to be in it for their interest and their interest only. Uh, so Peggy uh, put in the chat, has anyone considered getting a list of all property slash homeowners and send them 
details on this topic. Um, we'd have more people involved that way instead of just UCCA members. So it's not just the UCCA uh, email. We, we, we do send that out. We obviously post within the homeowners group. The, the sort of next level thing that we could try to do is, you know, pull the data that the county has, that LEPA has with addresses of everyone and send out physical letters. I can tell you from us doing that in the past, they're usually fruitless of people responding to a physical letter coming to them and, and joining uh, anything. So I think, uh, and, 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 and obviously the information gets out there through the UCCA emails and, and the homeowners group. Um, you got to hope that there's some decent word of mouth. I mean, all of you know at least a few other homeowners and everything um, to get as many people involved. But it's been a it's been a you know decades long uh, issue trying to get people involved in community projects on this island. So, um, but op open to any another idea to, to get more people involved in, in talking about it. Um, there are a lot of new owners on the island. Over the last 18 months, 181 properties have changed hands out of 700 on the island. So it's pretty massive. Um, so there are a lot of new owners that you know, we probably can't easily get to right now. Well, Swin, it, it, this is David. So it does seem like this has been an effort by UCCA to at least step out of the, sure. the shadows to say, we're, we're, we don't claim to be the voice of the island, but we're willing to be a voice of the island. And for all those who want to join with us, please come along. You don't have to join UCCA, but at least, you know, get in on the effort. Um, so anything we can do to reach out to Safety Harbor, not Safe Harbor, but Safety Harbor, you know, as a group, that's another contingent of people on the island that tend to, you know, we, we all, you know, have our groups that because of ownership, clubship, or whatever, yeah. at some point we need to all just be islanders. And I think that's where we're trying to step out to see. And that's why it's wins done too so far to see engage the temperature of the island to, for, to participate, uh, get feedback. You know, and if there's a suggestion UCCA should be more leadership in this for now, and then that I think would continue to be something we would do. Yeah, uh, real, real quick, and I don't know if he wants to speak or not, but we do have Rick Fox uh, on. Rick, do you, would you like to speak any, uh, sorry, any opinion on um, where Safety Harbor Club is on things? I don't know if y'all had a chance to discuss internally or not. Nope, nope. All good. Um, all right. So, what other questions do we have on on the project? Does everyone understand the the path forward with the process? Yeah. No. Nope, maybe. <laughs> no more questions. So, so yeah, I, I would invite everyone, um, and I'm going to do this myself just as an exercise. It'd be easy to just do it in my head, but, you know, to do that good old fashioned, write it out, write the list of pros and cons on this project. I think that we'll probably have a hard time coming up with any, if, you know, many or any pros. Um, I think it does bring a, a lot of extra impact, a lot of different uh, traffic to the island in many ways, boats, people, golf carts, walking, wherever it is. So um, as always, I, I'm available. I'll, I'll hop on the phone and, and talk with anyone about this or any other um, you know, topic on the island. You can email me, you can text me, you can, you know, anything you want, if you want to uh, have your voice heard, if, you know, some people don't want to speak up and, and talk, um, you know, I, I'll ask questions for you uh, along the way. But I think right now, um, you know, we may do one more town hall just to get, you know, a few more people. Uh, this one's got 38 
Um, people dialed in, got a fear. There's a few spouses there. The last one had, I think, 50 um, people. So, so we're missing a, a pretty good swath of the, of the island here and um, just educating them on what it is. I mean, and that's part of the problem too. You don't want to be the person who four years from now, you go, whoa, what is that? Where'd that come from? I had no idea, right? We, we should know what's going on with, with our island because um, the future with it is going to be complicated. This, this is one thing. I mean, I hope everyone knows that we're, we probably have a hundred more homes coming on this island in the next five to seven, eight years. That's a lot. So. Uh, That's actually going to bring a lot more impact to the island than this, frankly. I, I, you're, I don't you're not like wrong. the process. Pardon me? I said you're not wrong. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so let's see here. Got some type in here. Yeah, so um, I guess I guess that's about all I have. I'm trying to think if, if I'm missing anything that we discussed on the last one. I guess one one thing we can talk about is, you know, uh, I think Jeff Fox was the first one to kind of bring it up at the original meeting and then the last town hall is, you know, think about, you know, why they're coming, right? The, what's their return on investment here? How do they get their money back? When they're building something that's a loyalty program, basically, for six million dollars plus whatever it costs to to run it, um, it's hard to make sense of it. How it makes any sense? So, all right. Well, I think I think that's all I have uh, for now. And unless anyone has anything else they want to chime in with, but um, you know, I, I encourage you to sort of make that pros and cons list. Um, you know, if, if you have a voice one way or the other, you know, be prepared to let it be heard. And then over the next month, uh, we'll either have another one of these town halls, possibly one with Safe Harbor themselves, and, um, and we'll just see where it goes from there. But um, as we think about it, I think we have to think, you know, how do we come together as a community? If we're going to fight it, someone or some group uh, and or an attorney or someone has to go make that fight. If 15 random people show up at a hearing and ramble different thoughts, we're not, we're not gonna be cohesive. Cool. I propose that you lead and organize the effort on a, on an official in an official capacity or whatever i i think i'm very grateful i think many others are as well that you are spearheading this and i would like to see you continue doing that and leading this charge and from my standpoint and from my sweet husband's standpoint anything you need from us please let us know and we will help you however we can Awesome. Well, I, I thank you for that, Anne Caroline. Uh, I, I would prefer a committee come together. It'd be better to have a, a group of people that, that are sort of leading it together. Um, I'm happy to be part of that or not, depending on, on where sort of we all stand on it. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we, we have to have uh, some group come together that, that is going to take lead on it. Um, Candy just asked, uh, curious, anyone know how much the parcel is worth undeveloped? Well, they, that parcel changed hands. It was sort of an internal changing of hands. I, I want to say in 2019 for $600,000. Um, the parcel that's right next to it that is largely similar in size and also has a dock. It doesn't have quite the expanded dockage that has just sold for a million dollars. So, you know, in today's market, it's probably anywhere from 900,000 to 1.2, 1.3 million, maybe, is what I would think the land parcels were. So. 
All right. Well, if, if we don't have any other questions, comments, anything like that, we'll we'll wrap this one up. And Thank um, you. oh, yeah. You Thank betcha. you. Thanks. You so, uh, and then just look for more communication. We'll send more communication if we're going to have a, another one of these town halls. And if we uh, decide to do one inclusive of having Safe Harbor uh, answer community questions. Cool. Just as a reminder to everybody, um, about probably take a day or so, and I will publish this video on the town hall um, page of the UCCA website in case you either join late had to leave that someone you know you you know had to leave earlier couldn't make it so that you be able to see the recording of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right, everyone have a great evening.